Thank you. I have an idea. These words have always made my parents a little nervous because sometimes my ideas are kind of crazy. But mostly, these ideas come when I ask myself, what if? Like, what if I mixed a bunch of glue with popcorn kernels and put them in the microwave? <laughs> would they turn into popcorn balls or would they explode? Well, <laughs> guess what? They did both. And we had to buy a new microwave. <laughs> but this time, my idea is a good one. I've always loved building things. I was the little girl who would rather learn to use a blowtorch than play with dolls. <laughs> I have nothing against dolls, it's just my heart was in other places. I'd spend hours making contraptions and structures with connects, and when I built everything on the plans that came in the box, I designed my own projects. At one point, I built a bike that would power a video game, and although I didn't produce that much power, my favorite part was learning to weld, probably because I liked all the sparks. My favorite idea came on a lazy summer's day before fifth grade, when I drew a schematic for a costume I wanted to build for Halloween. Before I knew it, I designed an R2-D2 costume, complete with moving parts, sound, and a secret candy shoot. <laughs> So, you can see why my parents were concerned when I came to them with my latest idea. It's been my goal since I was seven years old to build a house before graduating high school. As a girl, I think it's important for me to know how to do it. But mostly, I'm just really curious how it all works. The tools, the plans, everything. And my quest to learn to build a house has taken me in a direction I never imagined. I didn't set out to start Nerd Girl Homes, but it wasn't until I realized I had no money no land, and no idea how to build a house that I began to do some research. <laughs> That's when I discovered there are approximately 30,000 high schools across the U.S. And I wondered, what if every high school built houses and donated them to their community? Kids like me could learn to build a home, and we'd certainly put an ongoing dent in the homeless crisis. I hadn't realized it, but homes and homelessness have always been on my mind and I know the causes are complex. I live in a place where the homeless population has increased 22% in the last two years. The economy has affected the unemployment rate and rents are extremely high. We pass a shelter every day. Nearly 3,000 people in Santa Cruz County are homeless. Almost as many as the number of songs on most iPods. Except these aren't songs. These are people with stories and lives. And some of those stories are a part of my life. My mom's family lost her house due to unemployment and financial reasons when she was my age. We talk about this a lot and how it affected her. And although they went into a rental home, not a shelter, she believes her dad died four years later from a broken heart. He was only 56 years old and I never got to meet him. I wonder about him sometimes and what he'd think of my big ideas. My mom seems convinced that he'd like them but I'd nev I'll never know. You see, nobody wants to lose a home for any reason. It's devastating. My home building project was intimidating at first. I had no clue where to begin, and I heard the first of many discouraging words. But I was so convinced that this was a good idea, so that I just kept on pushing. This summer, I started work on a nonprofit organization to help me fund the project. Then I found the Tumbleweed Tiny House Company and learned about their houses on wheels. They're the perfect size for me, and they're good for the environment, too. So, before I knew it, I built my website and started receiving donations. <laughs> I was feeling pretty good by this point, and was looking for a mentor, someone to help guide me through the project. A friend referred me to a man he thought could help, and excited by this possibility, I set up a meeting and I put together an agenda for our talk. I have to say, this was absolutely the most discouraging experience. Not only did he tell me no, he wouldn't help me, but he actually said he was worried I might lose a finger. Yeah, lose a finger. I mean, who says that? I couldn't help but wonder what his response would have been if I were a 16-year-old boy. Would he have been concerned about my finger? I don't think so. 
He also expressed his doubt that I'd ever finished my project. <laughs> I left our meeting and allowed his doubts to penetrate my mind. Maybe I would lose a finger. I mean, how could I possibly finish the project once school started? I pondered these negative thoughts as I went to sleep that night. And you know what? He made me mad. I woke up the next day more determined than ever to build my house. One thing that I've learned about myself over the years is that there's nothing that fires me up more than somebody underestimating my abilities. My first thought that morning was, why should I let one person have that kind of power over my dreams? I'm passionate about my house project, even if this naysayer thinks I can't do it. We possess the power to change the world by uh, one idea at a time, by daring to take action. And although the journey ahead seemed rather intimidating, I really want to prove this guy wrong. So I am. I'm almost done with the roof of my house. And when it's done, <laughs> I'm going to donate it to the homeless or raffle it off and donate the funds. And that's just the beginning. I've got an environmental science class on the Central Coast expressing interest. And there are over 20 more schools represented here today with kids who I can mentor through the process. I've raised nearly $8,000, had over 43,000 hits on my website, and am receiving hundreds of encouraging emails from people all over the world. Here are a few quotes from some of my favorite. I just called my two daughters over to the computer to share this story with them. What a great role model. A young female visionary who can wield power tools and give back to society. <laughs> if there is one girl who can change the world with the power of one, it is you. Here's to you and all you do. Keep up the good work and kind deeds. May joy follow you. <clears throat> oh, and the guy who was worried about my finger? Well, <laughs> I heard that when he drove down my street to get a glimpse of the house project, he said, that's one determined kid. Also, he subscribed to my blog where he can watch me dare to take action every day. And it's a good thing because I have an idea and I bet you do too. Thank you.